Hit me. Okay. I can't play all of the Basement Jacks. Uh, Back to the Wild Gorgon City Remix because, well, copyrights. But... I can talk about these Swan D1090s a little bit. You're not perfect. These are not perfect speakers. There's, there's flaws. There's flaws in them, and we're going to discuss those flaws. But I'm going to also start by saying these are probably a perfect sounding speaker. Zeos, you do this every fucking time. Yes. However, here's the thing. Do you see that little picture there? It's a Swan. And if you know anything about me, I am absolutely biased towards the company Swan. Now, the last thing, the first thing they sent me, the company, the company has finally contacted me. I've bought so much of their stuff. And um, even those M3As, $1,200, I'm like, I need to have them. And they're fucking amazing. And then um, they contacted me and I got those, those headphones, the Swan you know, over ear noise canceling. And they were like... Okay, headphones are not my thing. And like, all right, how about the next time we do a speaker? I'm like, okay, great. And they they linked me to this, and it's on Amazon. At least it might be. There's one left in stock currently, and it's a four hundred dollar black speaker. And I'm like, wait, wait, Swan, Swan is wood and shapes in gold, and oh, the flavors of the of the fucking depth. And I'm like, what is this shit? Hey, Swan, what is this shit? So I get them, and then I realize that, okay. All right, let's take a look. Six and a half. So I've only had the M300 to six and a half, and the MA3A is six and a half. Okay. A big old soft dome. Ooh, what a pretty waveguide this is in. And then it's deep. Holy shit. This speaker is no joke. The box, excluding this waveguide fascia the box is a perfect square so it is as high as it is deep you could stand them next to each other so that's oh that's interesting and let's look at the back on this one and uh okay speaker input terminal here oh slot port big fat slot port not like a skinny one this is like a, this is a it's a flared it goes in like this slot port cool and um, by the way, I have them reversed in the living room because it's easier for me to get the wires to this one. Um, normally you would put the powered one on the right. I'm gonna delineate right now because I just did the uh, Klipsch 5s. The Klipsch 5s, the 5s are $800. That's twice as much money as these. And for those $800, you get uh, better looks. Um, way more features. You could have subwoofer out, remote control for the sub on the, on the remote control, you get um, the ability to swap left and right, you get all those features like the Vanatu T1 Encores and the Canto Tux, those are all like the luxury $800 speaker. This, mm, not so many options. You get line in one, line in two, coaxial in, optical in, which is what I'm using for specific reasons, and then there's a Bluetooth signal that is uh, constantly searching whenever the speaker is powered on in the back, just, just constantly. In fact, I was having a pain in the ass time because I usually live stream it as a Bluetooth sender and I turn it on and then I connect it to a device, but I turned it on and it connected to something. I was like, what the hell is that? It connected to the speakers. I had to, it was connected to the speakers without this being on the Bluetooth setting. And that's gonna be part of the reason it's not perfect. It's just like, why don't look for Bluetooth to connect to until I put you in Bluetooth mode, baby, D1090. So they don't look like swans, they just look like speakers. They also, by the way, come with covers, but I mean, they're not exactly super duper lookers, except if you love drivers. So you got the covers and you could do that and you can make them look, um, No. Like, I even like the Swan covers on, like, the M200s or the M300s, because you could see through them, and they give you, like, a little bit more. But uh, I'll tell you this much. If you slam this cover on there tight enough, because they use little pegs, if you get on tight enough, this will rattle against the fascia of the speaker, because there's so much movement from the 6.5 that this just becomes... So, uh, just don't use these. 
There. That was nice and simple. I'm glad they give you the option. It's good to protect it from dust. Don't fucking use them. Um, if little Timmy or, or, or Tammy comes and stabs that fucking uh, tweeter, you're dead. They're dead. You and your friends are dead. That scene from um, Dark Knight. Yeah, I'd kill them. Um, the driver's boring as fuck looking. The LED's only on one side. It's a little white swan because we're in optical. It changes colors as you go through the different inputs. If I uh, look at the, I hopped. I hopped in a review. Volume knob, digital. You see it flash? You see it flash red, meaning we're at the maximum because I'm controlling the volume in FUBAR. You got a bass and a treble knob. If you push in the volume, now it's blue, which is line one, line two. Bluetooth is blinking. Ah, uh, coaxial digital, and back to white for optical. Um, here's the thing. That LED fails occasionally. It's working right now. That's working perfectly. This is a reminder. Find the R. B. Find the RB. Sign the RB42s. Oh, shit. All right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Guy who won the RB42s wants me to sign them. Um, and I'm not going to remember because I'm bad. So I'm going to take some white pens right now. And I'm going to throw them in my kitchen. That's how the life I lead, all right? Because that popped up, but I'm not going to remember what that is. Boom, sign the RB42s. Okay. Anyway, this, uh, this LED decides to just give the fuck up. The red just dies. So um, when you power them off, which I'm going to get the remote out. Let's look at the remote for a second. By the way, you're buying these speakers. In case you want to leave, you're like, oh, this is, this is a... Wait for it. Bluetooth, mute, line one, line two, optical coaxial, volume down, volume up, and power. Power. Red flash. Red flash. This is the off standby mode. Red flash. Why? Red flash. Why? Why? And I know the LED is bad because that red flash will stop and I'll be like, is it broken? That is the most distracting thing ever. Um, another issue that we came across, the remote, very plain. Obviously, there's not much on here. I like the shape of it. It's comfortable in the hand. It has a Swan logo. The volume controls work fine. Every time you hit down, it flashes just a little bit, just a little bit. And you get to the maximum, it shows you. These top buttons, mute. 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 There you go. And it's probably just this unit because I know some. I've made four or five people buy these. People in my patronage chat. If you're not in the $10 a month patronage chat, you don't know because I haven't. I'm just filming the review now. Last speaker review in this apartment. But I made, because there was only like four of them on Amazon. I'm like, I'm not going to release this to the public like four. So everyone should buy them. Everyone should buy these and then tell me about them. And they have. Pretty good re reviews. They don't. They're not complaining much, but um, their remotes don't fucking have a problem. Like it's still a simple remote, but these top four, like optical, I could usually switch between coax and optical pretty easily. But you got to press incrementally harder for these top ones, except for power. So build quality, not eight hundred dollars worth. So the LED fails occasionally and just loses red, and the remote control is a little hard to push. But Zeos, but Zeos. You said they're a perfect sounding speaker, whatever the fuck I said at the beginning of this review. Um, so here's the deal. Have you ever heard of DSP, right? Right, digital signal processing. And we talk about it with like um, <clears throat> Dirac Live and all the room corrections and things. And I've heard insanely corrected speakers at like audio shows. So I like they measure the room and they do all that. Well, this is a brand new speaker I think for 2020. Now all the other swans I reviewed have some sort of digital processing to clean the sound up and you know avoid using crossover components and Vanatus use it and the Klipsch 5s definitely used it and they're all great speakers but here's the thing um, Swan and HiVi are the same company and HiVi makes some of the best drivers on the face of the earth. So what happens when you take some of the best drivers, even if it's plain Jane looking whole, uh, woofer, and then that very large soft dome, and then you somehow magically make this <clears throat> 
waveguide front, which doesn't just roll out, it rolls back away so that it's sort of like floating. Like this curve is not a mistake or a design element. I'm pretty sure the waveguide is designed to come out and then fall away. It's the only way I could, I could figure out how it's doing what it does. So now we've got a very simple but effective waveguide and very, very high quality six and a half inch and, and dome tweeter. And then on top of that, 2020 DSP correction by Swan. Now as a Swan fanboy, um, I always have like this inkling that they're gonna, they're gonna be better than you know other companies are doing things. And it, sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not, but most times it's true and this time it's fucking true. This is the only way to describe what's happening with these speakers because nothing makes sense. Six and a halves can't throw this much low end. Imaging can't be this good. Vocal clarity, nothing, nothing makes fucking, if these were a thousand dollars a pair, I would have this to say about them. Well, they could do better on the remote and I wish that uh, thing didn't do and they don't look great, but they're still worth it. Because you sit down, make sure no cat, and you shuffle. And nothing makes sense. I'll skip for a little bit. Because there's... It's like everything is on a field grid pattern now. Of like, okay, imaging left and right is spectacularly accurate. And also imaging front to back. That isn't even imaging, but I don't know, the depth is spectacular. And then things sound huge with a Y, not even an H, a y, huge around it. Like bigger than my heresies. Like I, this is the second time I've set them up in this living room. The first time was when I first got them because I'm like, oh, I want to try these swans. And that's when I made five people buy it in the patronage chat. And now, then I put them to the side because they weren't available and Swan was like, look, can you not review them for like a month because we're still getting the stuff in? I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't fucking worry about it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just, just, just get more. Bring more. Bring more to America. Bring more to my country. And so I let them sit there on the side, and I did other things. I did other speakers, and I tried to forget what I heard, because my job is very, very difficult if I know something is better and it's sitting in the room. So if you know, like, I think I reviewed four other speakers before this, and these are sitting in the corner. And if I didn't mention these in every one of those videos, you're fucking lucky. Because I knew what was coming. I knew the Atom T8Vs are an amazing audiophile sounding speaker with an eight inch and so much low end. This has more low end. This has better mid-tone balance. This has better vocals. And it's, you know, $200 less than those pair. And it actually has a remote. It's not like just a studio monitor. The, the Klipsch 5s are a beautiful speaker, amazingly well put together. All the options you could possibly want. DSP corrected to the nines, however, you DSP correct a five inch, it's a little different than when you DSP correct a six and a half hi-fi driver. These... Everything sounds huge or clear or soft. Ooh, good song. <clears throat> like there's that imp there's impending low end on the bo bottom of this. We're not done with the negatives yet, by the way, because there's another one that might pop up as I skip through. Freebird! Alright, if I just sit here for 9 minutes and 13 seconds... Oh god, I want to just do Freebird the entire way through, because I mean, that's what everyone wants to hear, they want to hear Freebird. I, there's a sound demo, and I really don't want to be playing too much music in this, because it's hard enough to monetize my videos as it is, because I say FUCK a lot. 
but there's no there there's like no limit to what these speakers can handle as far as genres did i wake you up i apologize go i'll feed you later she cute thing um You throw them off my groove, baby. I'm gonna go back to this. I need to play a cert I need to play a song that has low end because it really I'm I'm hitting all the, the, the bad things. Robo World, there you go. Enter that one. But Chewbacca, there's Robo World. Okay. I may have to pause this and feed my cat. I can help you. Can help you. I'm not feeling it. You feeling it, baby? All right, let me feed my cat. Bring it back. Done? I'm gonna do some Dr. Funkenstein. Anyway, where was I? All right. The other issue with these speakers. Let me explain. DSP correction, right? That means digital signal processing. That means the digital signal processing. That means if you feed this an analog signal, it has to convert that analog back to digital to then do the processing that makes the fucking magic happen and then back to analog and then amp amplifiers. So with that logic, I did have it hooked up to a topping E30. Yes, DAC, just split the fiber optic and brought the one up here and I run it into the RCA and there is a slight degrade i mean like barely like it's just so fucking small because you're adding another conversion you're going because right now fiber optic into it means digital 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 the digital signal processor digitally signal processes and then it converts to analog once and then it comes out the front and when you try to run into this with rcas like oh zeos should i get a topping d90 and then run that into this for better sound quality no the best sound quality you're going to get out of these speakers is going to be when you push it through a digital, either coaxial digital or fiber optic. That's going to be it. And there's a problem with that. If I shuffled enough, I'd get to my 24-bit. Like these are cells speakers. These are just the biggest, scariest fucking speakers that have ever been here. I'll go to the 24 bit samples folder using my thumb. All right, here we go. Let's do Mystery Lou. Mystery Lou. Hmm. Next. Next. Next? Huh. What do I know music's playing? Oh, because, I, and this took a second to figure out, these speakers that sound the best on a digital input do not function at all anything higher than 48 kilohertz. 16 bit, bit, 24 bit, 44 one, 48, it's fine. Most of my music is 1644. I have some uh, 244448. And then I have 2496, 24192, 176, all these higher digital bitrate formats. And it won't play them at all. I was like, what is wrong? I spent, like, it took me, and then I had to go into Windows and start adjusting it. So if you're not using like Wasapi and pushing it, all you gotta do is set your windows to never ever be more than 2448, which is a stupidly low thing. 2496, that'd be fine. 2448, there's just whatever the processing is in this will not handle it. So when I had that two systems hooked up, when I had the E30 on top and then this, I'd have to switch to the E30 if I wanted to play higher bitrate things, which eliminates the need for higher bitrate things because it's having another conversion done. So it's like, that's the big, like, fuck, that's the big fuck. Because I want to hear these songs. I love all these songs. The, the, the Mystery Lou, uh, Speak Like a Child, and a Melaton, I can't hear, none of them. None of them, none of them will make the go. Zero make the go. 
So what do you do? Well, either I'd have to take it out of uh, this mode and it's just tell fucking Fubar not to allow it to go through high bit rate or just, um, eh, fuck it, use an analog input and lose maybe, and I don't like to give percentages because they're literally all guesses. If I tell you, oh, it's 8% worse, that's, that's a fucking guess. But once it stops not working, <laughs> Like the tweeters, like, those are huge, perfect tweeters. And you don't need to do any, I have not, I don't think I've touched the treble adjustment on this once, ever. I just, just the bass up a little bit, cause big room, even though it really doesn't need it. Because this has the best low end response of any speaker. Speaker, any speaker. Towers, eh, maybe my 590s might put out a little more low end, but I think this actually dives deeper. So I mean, and I wish my wish my playlist would behave today. It's really not being conducive to like, hey, where's Run the Jewels? No, no. I mean, Gorillas might actually hit it. I mean, that's not really sub bass, that's more like a kick drum bass, but it's still. These speakers sound way bigger than they are. And they absolutely do not sound like a $400 set. This is the same price as Adam T5Vs. These just, just, oh look, there's Adam T5Vs on the shoes of these swans. And I love Adam T5Vs, but there is not a single thing that those do with sound, that these don't beat them. Let's talk about on a desk performance, because if, if you've watched this channel and I've timed it right, there's been a bunch of sound demos and things where these were on the desk. I didn't like them there. I didn't, I didn't like them on a desk. Now those knobs blatantly scream that since that's supposed to be the right channel, I remember they're backwards for reasons and I have it reversed in FUBAR. Um, is that you that smells like burning electrical? I smell burning electrical. Probably not you, because I've had you running. Maybe it's you. Um, this means you should be able to touch the knobs. So that means it's, wor but it's just such, it's so much speaker. And you need that bass port. You need it at least this far away from the wall. You like my dead pile of grass for Chewbacca? You, these speakers require attention to placement and they want you to be far enough away that they can use them. They want, they want you to back the fuck up. There are not whisper speakers. There are some speakers that work absolutely flawlessly at quiet volumes. And you can use them on your desk because RB42s, if you lower RB42s, they sound still as good as they do loud. These speakers um, want you to use them. They want you to use them. They need to be used. They want the cops to come. If the cops don't show up, you're not using the speakers right. Why is it, all, why can't, mm. I'm just not stopping this. This is the greatest fucking thing. It sounds beautiful. I think that's the only word, that's the word I really wanna go with on these. It sounds beautiful. Like I'm talking about DSP corrections and how they're removing the flaws and the almost perfect high vibe drivers and there's so much. Music sounds beautiful. Like, like, I mean, if I put Galactic Mermaid on, I mean, that might. <laughs> These no jokes sound probably better than my heresies. Like straight up technology wise, like competency in sound reproduction, the heresies lose to these. In oh, but what about the triangles? Ah, oh, those were just, they were real good. They were real good. They were smooth, creamy smooth. Competency, these are the most competent speakers I've ever heard. That's, that's the end result of this. They're beautiful in that they are fucking perfect. They're not a perfect speaker. Remote control has sticky buttons. They don't play anything over 48 kilohertz. And you gotta use the digital input. 
and that LED is gonna blink out and all the colors are gonna be the same because red's missing. And they're not exactly lookers, but holy fuck, when you find the music, and it isn't all music, because you're gonna find some music that's like, wait, this is recorded this poorly? But when you find the music that's perfect, I don't even like this song, but this song, something about it. It sounds like the 3D bot. I just did the um, review of the IFI uh, can amp, which has that 3D button, which does magic things. And this sounds like it's doing magic things. Like Dio, just sounds like Dio. Dio doesn't, it's got good width, it's got really good imaging, but I'd probably pass. Otis Taylor. Like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't describe that sound, because it's just, when they tell you all the speakers disappear, the best speakers in the world, you don't hear them. You just hear the sound. And I think my brain, I think if this was a completely blacked out room, with the windows covered and the little Swan logo covered, and the fireplace off, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to point to where the speakers are. They're just gonna be over there somewhere. Oh, there you go. That's a nice. These breathe. That, by the way, is Mech Warriors 2 Ghost Bears Legacy cinematic opening. I didn't even know I had this much from Mech Warriors 2. Mech Warrior games. Remember when those were great? No. Off. And it's not, like I wanted to make sure I didn't focus this review completely on the low end, because that's the first thing you notice when you play these, is a holy fuck, why is the room shaking? Like I've had, I get a rattle in that track light up there when the subwoofers are just kicking at the perfect frequency. And it's very rare that happens with speakers and not with just a subwoofer. And it happened with these. I wish my, oh wow, that was terrifying. Maybe I'll dub all the music out of this episode. It's just, I don't know, my playlist hasn't gotten any bigger. It just every once in a while, Fubar just decides to not throw me a bone. Figures on the last speaker review on this apartment, it's just gonna be a prick. Oh, I could put on the Kiz Niver Ope. Oh, fuck. Another thing that's a flaw. If you push them, and I mean push them, like I'm pushing them right now. This is loud. I mean, if I just keep talking, I can pause this. You probably can't hear what I'm saying, because they are fucking loud as shit. If you push them loud and you put on like Kashafelstein's OPR, which, let's see, OPR. It won't do Kashafelstein. Oh, let's see. Gush. Boom. You put on this. Ow. The speaker will protect itself. You'll hear, it'll, it'll literally duck the volume on the driver. So you, you, you wanna push, you're gonna wanna push it so fucking loud, but you're gonna have to, and it's not like it's all, it's, Zio says they don't go loud. They go loud. They go plenty loud, but if you want that perfect DSP corrected low end to fill the room and not have it like squelch the fucking bass because it doesn't want to explode, you're just going to have to know that the most oppressively bassy music at high volumes is going to just, just you're going to feel it retract so it doesn't damage itself. And on like the Klipsch 5s, 
or the Canto Tux or the Vanity T1 Encores, you have an answer for that. You plug a subwoofer and they all to accept subwoofer outputs and they'll take the subwoofer base away from here and they'll give it just a subwoofer and they'll play louder and you win. With these, it doesn't have any options at all. Zero, none. You just, is is. The only way you could do that is by manipulating it via like a mini DSP or, well, that's literally it. You're basically that or, or you'd have to go, and that would still involve you going RCA in because my mini DSP only outputs 2496. I literally can't hook up my mini DSP nano digi to these because it just comes out with no sound. There's no sound. And if you run an analog input from a regular mini DSP or say the um, Emotiva S8 subwoofer and you want to run it through to put the bass into that and then out to these, you're taking a quality hit because you're going from an analog conversion back to a digital conversion back to an analog conversion. These are fucking great speakers. I have a lot to talk about and complaints, but when they work and when my playlist fucking behaves, here, hold on, let's, 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 let's die together. Is a song that makes you die together. Oh. Like that, that, that. I know this GoPro is stereo, but that was so precise where it placed it that I highly doubt I've ever heard imaging that good. And I, I blame that or reward that to not just the DSP correction, but the wave guiding on the front of the speaker. It's the only thing that makes sense. It has to be a compounded thing. Just DSP won't do this. Just driver quality won't do this. It's driver quality and DSP and waveguide design that's doing this. It's the, it's the three, it's the three freefecta. And probably the, the amplifiers are goddamn good. They're, there's no, like with, with, with normal powered monitors, but you're against this and it's like, but here it's, If my ear balls touch the, tr the, the tweeter, I hear, uh, like touch it. Like there's no audible sound coming out of there that any human could register from more than like five inches away. So everything's clean. Everything's perfect. Minus the flaws. Ow, that sort of scared me a little bit. Yeah, the port design, the driver build, the DSP is abs. Here's the thing. Um, I own those M3As in the other apartment. The, the big ones, the wooden ones with the wood sides, the lean back. And I'm like, I spent $1,200 on those. There's a Mark II version of that that's currently for sale. That is not as pretty, not even a little bit as pretty, and uses what looks to be the exact same driver array in a vertical arrangement instead of like the nicer box. And it's only a thousand dollars. And people have asked me, Zios, which one should I get? The twelve hundred dollar one that's the Mark One, or this thousand dollar one that's the Mark Two? And I'm pretty fucking certain. If I can get them to send it, I will. But I'm pretty certain if they've DSP corrected the in the new one with the same drivers that I was like jacking off about the old one, if they've done this sort of DSP correction deck in the Mark II M3A for, for less money, I don't give a fuck how ugly it is. Buy it. Buy it, buy it, Chewbacca. You're cute. But I'm gonna play loud music and it's gonna scare you. I don't think I've ever had a review. This this is just fitting for the last uh, speaker review of my living room in this apartment. Is that no? I don't want to hear any of these any of this music. None of it. And I'm trying to look like above and below it. If I just like, oh, what about that song? Oh, London Grammar. There you go. So let's see. Let's navigate down. Track two, KXP. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Let's see. Ready? Ready? Come on. Come here. Yeah, 
Yeah, these these would if if I went to an audio show and I wanted to fuck the world up, I would build a giant box to go around them with fancy fucking carvings and everything and a big open fascia that's got like a grill and you'd never see it and then open the back up so that port does it and try to keep the speakers inert and just play these and tell everyone they're $17,000 and everyone will go, oh my, that's very good. I'll take pre-orders now. Okay, great. Because this is an ab, like, I, this is not just a good speaker. Like, oh, it's it's better than other speakers. Okay, Zio, this is better than it all. This is a fucking leap ahead of other speakers. A leap, like a big fucking jump. Like, oh, wait, what? If a child, a child. That, that's, that's absurd. And it, I'm sorry that I had to skip through a trillion songs and it's definitely not getting monetized. I just hope it isn't blocked. I'll have to upload it and just see what happens. Because these fucking speakers on the right music, in the right placement, are the, the best speakers I've ever heard. And I'll stand by that until you have your set. And you come back to this fucking channel, you come back to this video, after you spent 400 of your hard-earned fucking dollars to listen to some asshole on the internet, and you write a comment down below, or on Hi-Fi Guides, in the Hi-Fi Guide forums, by the way, which is, should have a post for every uh, single unit I've reviewed. Hey, what do you know? The, um, the LED broke. Now it's blue. Because it should be white, and when the, blue, when the red fails, it turns cyan, which is the exact same color it would be if I hit the remote and went to auxiliary one. Let's see which is a hard one to hit, a line one. You know, that doesn't change. And coaxial turns dark blue now, and the optical is blue. So yeah, the, the driver failed. Probably too much, too much London grammar. I'm, I'm willing to bet my fucking reputation on these speakers. I'm willing to do that with everything that I say, oh, this is great. Because someone out there's gonna listen, someone out there's gonna buy it, and they're gonna agree with me. And as long as I've made that person fucking happy, I'll do it again next week. Because these are fucking worth it. And there's no way you could tell me otherwise. You can't just, oh, Zeus, you're just all exaggerating. It's just a... Beneath the moon. I get an emotional reaction to these speakers. And I... The, the worst speakers I reviewed re recently were the Elacs that I bought for fucking 600. I bought speakers that were more money than this, designed by, a, by someone that everyone's heard of, and I hated them. Like the difference between the Elac fucking debut reference and these the, the, is Im immeasurable. Immeasurable. L listen to those for the rest of my life and live to be 100, or listen to these for another, you know, year. And then, uh, you know, my dick falls off. Like, maybe that's still not worth it, but that's the sort of level of difference in enjoyment factor that I find. What is that? One, two, three, four. Go. Yeah, no, that's not what I was looking for. Low Yan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's so clear. Like, you gotta be able to hear this on the camera. The GoPro Hero 8's got decent enough microphones. I've done enough fucking demos in this goddamn living room where it's just like, oh, it's just a GoPro mic. But you fucking can hear it. I know you can. Because if I hear it with this giant gap of quality difference, you hear it. Th that's not even a joke, like that, that that's a guitar being plucked very loudly in front of me. These speakers don't even fucking matter. It's just whatever is in between Emma Watson's eyes is what's fucking going on. I didn't even, I used a 3D girl as the wallpaper. Because that's how serious I am. That's the eyes. Those are the eyes. Those tweeters are fucking just staring you straight. They look like the fucking eyes of a shark coming to steal your goddamn soul. I, I, I gotta end this because I'm just gonna go on. I don't even know how many fucking minutes I've been talking with between the edits with the cat.
So you don't have it up that loud. I'm 14 decibels down on FUBAR and I have the speaker still up. But this is like, mm. Everything is just, I, I didn't think that these came with measurements and they were just like flat as a fucking board. It was mega mean, straight across. Yeah, all right, I know, I have to, I think I've described everything. If you, uh, I'll list the, the things that are wrong with them. Um, they're not very pretty. They certainly don't stand out. They could just be any other fucking studio monitor. Although they have a remote and it's like, it's one wired to the other with the four pin and you know, they have Bluetooth. So they're a little bit more feature filled than a, one of those. Uh, they don't have features. They're, they're feature filled, but they don't have features. Like you can't swap which one is the, you know, the master unit. You know, the Bluetooth you know, basically is pairing mode all the fucking time, which is a negative. If you push them too loud, they do protect themselves. I don't really count it as a negative, just something you have to keep in mind. If you listen to a song and you start pushing it up and you're like, why does it sound weird? Uh, back at the fuck down. Doesn't play anything over 1648 or 2448. You could do 41, 48, 96. Nope. Silence. If you run an analog, you do have a slight, slight negative run because it has to do an entire analog to digital conversion to do the DSP and then bring it back up. So you're sort of stuck with a digital input, which shouldn't be too bad for most people. But if it is, you know, you can't exactly like use that. And then the LED is going to fail and the buttons in the remote might be weird. It's just, it's, this is the, that is the maximum amount of flaws I would allow before I was like, hey, they need to really fix this. No, 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 that's fine. Everything else it's doing is, is too good to give a shit. Listen to Weird Al on these. Because it just sounds so good. I apologize for my playlist. My playlist is being naughty. I even put it in random when I broke for Chewbacca because I thought maybe shuffle wasn't shuffling hard enough and random doesn't allow you to go back. It just really fucks your playlist up. And uh, it's just, it doesn't matter. Something's wrong. All I could do is go to demo tracks, which actually don't get the video blocked, which actually is a smart thing. I could do snarky puppy. None of this matters. The sound demos in the description, I think it did okay. I, I can never fully trust the sound demo to be like what I hear because it just doesn't work that way. And it wouldn't matter if I put the microphones here further away from the, from the speakers because microphones are not human ears. They just aren't. And even those microphones that are human ears aren't human ears because then you'd have to have specifically like headphones designed to be the opposite of those. I wonder if that's even doable. I'm, I'm, I look, this is like a 15 minute review. I'm, I'm taking my sweet ass time because cat, because this apartment, because this room, we're going to miss the shit out of it as a, as a channel. It's probably the next review is going to be in a basement somewhere. Hopefully it's my basement and not like the basement of like a South Dakota motel because that's where I was forced to live. So, I mean, You know, I'm 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 done. I'm done selling you these speakers. All I could all I could do is plead that you at least keep them on your list. You don't have to buy them. You don't have to buy them. But if you know someone who's not you that you know might have four hundred dollars and you're like, yeah, I really want a set of speakers in my living room because you know the big game's coming up and I, I maybe I got a sound bar. They got that nice one for with the subwoofer for three hundred ninety-five dollars. You stop that fucking man. And you buy him these, or you make him buy these, and then. You go over to his house on the Sunday Super Bowl, and yeah, the Super Bowl is gonna sound good on them. I was watching movies on these, but then you're gonna somehow fucking get like Rune to play or Spotify or something with music, and you're gonna put on that track, and you're gonna go, oh my god, god, and then you're gonna come back to this video, and you're gonna go in the comments and go, well, you weren't wrong, Zeus. That's all I want. I just want to be. I want to know that I'm not crazy. I literally made people buy these speakers. 
because I wanted to know I wasn't crazy. And if I'm crazy, then, you know, I quit. But if I'm not crazy, then these are the best purchase in audio you could make, for speakers at least. Because you don't need any amps, and you don't need any DACs. It's just done. I'm, I'm, Emma Watson's eyes are available to download in the description, which sounds weird, but I'm going to go with it. Um, yeah, yeah, 3D, 3D girl. Which is, it's weirder with a 3D girl, but at least it's super zoomed in. Um, link to these. They should be on Amazon. Uh, the Patreon and Subscribe Star are what allow me to continue this madness and these, these fucking rants that never end. And I have to decide if, because I did the sound up before this, I have to decide if I want to just switch back to my heresies for the last few weeks in this apartment or leave these up. Although I'm going to probably pack those up and then these will be the only thing in my... Here's my plan, all right? Because I'm moving, in case you don't know this. And this is the last video I'm filming here. Like here, this is, this is it. Enjoy the last view. Because it will never look this way again. And I'm... <sighs> when I tear this apartment apart, put it into boxes and have men bring it somewhere else, these will be the first speakers that come out. I'm going to take, I'm going to put them back in their box and I'll, when I unpack there, and these will be the first speakers out because they're just going to plug them into the wall and I'm going to go Bluetooth from my phone and I'm going to hit play and I will know exactly how shit the acoustics are or how good the acoustics are. And it doesn't matter because these will be, these will be living somewhere in my fucking vicinity forever until the next Swan M3A Mark II DSP Corrected 2021 comes out, and then that'll be the best speaker I've ever heard, because that's what progress looks like. So, click links. Thank you for sticking through this. I don't know how long it is. I don't care. I'm just flowing, or I'm being upset at my playlist. And we're gonna, we're gonna move, we're gonna motivate you, me, and Chewbacca. And I'll see you all somewhere else. Sound demo tomorrow, though. So that video is actually the last video. I'm just gonna keep going up until I blow up. Cause that's what I feel like doing!